We're gathered here this evening in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Today the church celebrates the feast of St. Charles Borromeo, a bishop. St. Charles uh, lived from 1538 to 1584. When his uncle became Pope, Pius IV, uh, uh, Charles was made the Cardinal Archbishop of Milan and the Papal Secretary of State as Archbishop. His aesthetic life and reform of his diocese made him one of the leading figures in the Catholic Reformation of the Church after the Council of Trent. May we learn from him that if we wish to make any progress in the service of God, we must begin every day of our life with new eagerness. As we prepare to celebrate this liturgy, we call to mind God's love and mercy in our lives. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and what I have failed to do through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask, Blessed Mary of our Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. Preserve in the midst of your people, we ask, O Lord, the spirit with which you filled the bishop St. Charles Borromeo, that your church may be constantly renewed and by conforming herself to the likeness of Christ may show his face to the world who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Philippians. My beloved, obedient as you have always been, not only when I am present, but all the more now when I am absent, work out your salvation with fear and trembling. For God is the one who, for his good purpose, works in you both to desire and to work. Do everything without grumbling or questioning, that you may be blameless and innocent, children of God without blemish, in the midst of a crooked and perverse generation, among whom you shine like lights in the world, as you hold on to the word of life, so that my boast for the day of Christ may be that I did not run in vain or labor in vain. But even if I am poured out as a libation upon the sacrificial service of your faith, I rejoice and share my joy with all of you in the same way you also should rejoice and share your joy with me. The word of the Lord. The Lord is my light and my salvation. The Lord is my light and my salvation. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom should I fear? The Lord is my life's refuge. Of whom should I be afraid? The Lord is my light and my salvation. One thing I ask of the Lord, this I seek, to dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, that I may gaze on the loveliness of the Lord and contemplate his temple. The Lord is my light and my salvation. I believe that I shall see the bounty of the Lord in the land of the living. Wait for the Lord with courage. Be stout-hearted and wait for the Lord. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Alleluia, alleluia. Alleluia, alleluia. If you are insulted for the name of Christ, blessed are you, for the Spirit of God rests upon you. Alleluia, alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Great crowds were traveling with Jesus, and he turned and addressed them. If anyone comes to me without hating his father and mother, wife and children, brothers and sisters, and even his own life, 
he cannot be my disciple. Whoever does not carry his own cross and come after me cannot be my disciple. Which of you, wishing to construct a tower, does not first sit down and calculate the cost to see if there is enough for its completion? Otherwise, after laying the foundation and finding himself unable to finish the work, the onlooker should laugh at him and say, this one began to build but did not have the resources to finish. Or what king, marching into battle, would not first sit down and decide whether with 10,000 troops he can successively oppose another king advancing upon him with 20,000 troops? But if not, while he is still far away, he will send a delegation to ask for peace terms. In the same way, every one of you who does not renounce all his possessions cannot be my disciple. The Gospel, the good news of the Lord. Jesus lays it out pretty strongly and clearly in the gospel that, you know, we're told at the beginning of this that crowds are following him, large crowds. And so he addressed them all saying, you know, are you ready to be my disciples? Do you know the cost of discipleship? And he lays it out, unless you hate father, mother, brother, sister, unless you renounce your family, you cannot be my disciple. And then he finishes off with saying, unless you renounce you know, all your possessions. But the, it begins with that first, though, with you know, uh, uh, wanting us to totally identify with Jesus Christ, following him. See, when, you know, for Jewish people, and, and especially in the time of Jesus, people knew all of their relatives you know, going back generations. You know, that, that their family name was very important. It was, gave them their identity. It was who they are. And Jesus is saying, unless you are willing to renounce your family identity and identify as a disciple of me, first off, all that other identity and everything else is meaningless. Once we first identify ourselves, be willing to be a disciple of Christ, be willing to carry our crosses, be willing to have that sacrificial willingness to sacrifice ourselves in love for one another, and caring for others rather than our own needs first. Everything else falls into place. We're able to, to love our families and respect our families and respect all of our friends and relationships and, and, and do good things, but that's all. We have the energy and grace and strength to do that and, and treat everyone you know, as, as a brother or sister in Christ, even the most difficult person, because we first have that identity of Jesus Christ. And we renew that identity every time we come together and celebrate Mass here, hear God's word, and are nourished by Christ himself to become what we eat, the very body of Christ. But we need that constant you know, reminder and the constant you know, knowing the cost of discipleship and willingness to follow Jesus Christ. St. Paul was reminding the Philippians of that. He, they said, he said, don't grumble and complain about things. You know, your identity is in Christ, Jesus. And he, Paul himself, says he's being poured out like a libation, you know, for the sake of the kingdom, for the sake of following Jesus Christ. This, these readings, these words are so important for us today as, as we continue to struggle with the unknowns of the pandemic, as we, you know, are, are, are dealing with, the, you know, unknowns of this election and, and with a very divided country, no matter, you know, who turns out to be president. We have a lot of work of healing and, and bridging you know, divides. And, th- and those div- divisions are there because again, we're, you know, they're only there because of, of these artificial divisions of, of identifying with Republicans or Demi- identifying with, as, as Democrats, divisions in the world, identifying as American or, or this is person's not a person because they aren't American. In Jesus Christ first, we're all children of God. And that's when, you know, that's our following, that's our calling. When we recognize that, we can bring healing and peace and the end to divisions. There's going to be differences, yes, but differences that will, uh, you know, be, we'll be able to celebrate, differences that won't divide us as children of God, but differences that we can use to work together to bring about God's kingdom here and now and for all eternity.
to stand and offer our prayers. We pray for ourselves that we may have the courage to be able to renounce all of our other things that we possess in life and have Jesus Christ as our, or as our, as our light and our salvation. For this we pray to you, Lord. Lord, we pray for those who are unaware of your love, your guidance, that they may come to know of these things. For these people, we pray to you, Lord. Lord, we pray for those who are hungry and homeless, those who are victims of violence and oppression, for all their needs, we pray to you, Lord. We pray for peace in the world, an end to violence, an end to war, an end to injustices, especially racial injustices. For this, we pray to you, Lord. We pray for the dignity and respect of all life from the moment of conception to a natural death. For this, we pray to you, Lord. We pray for all the students, faculty, and staff of the university, for their safety and well-being. For them, we pray to you, Lord. We pray for all who are sick in need of your healing, your peace, and for those who care for them, we pray to you, Lord. We pray for all who have died, that they may be at peace in your kingdom. For them, we pray to you, Lord. We pray for our country in the midst of this election, for peace and unity. For this, we pray to you, Lord. And for your prayers. Good and gracious God, we bring you all these prayers, those spoken, those deep within us. We trust in your answer to these prayers that we bring in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, through goodness we have this bread to offer, which earth is given and human hands are made to become the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, through goodness we have this wine to offer, fruit of the vine and work of human hands, and become our spiritual drink. Pray, my sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Look, O Lord, upon the offering placed on your altar in commemoration of St. Charles and grant by the power of this sacrifice that as you made him an attentive pastor, outstanding in the merit of his virtues, so you may make us abound in good fruit by our works through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is really right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Father most holy, through your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, your word, through whom you made all things, whom you sent as our Savior and Redeemer, incarnate by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin. Fulfilling your will and gaining for you a holy people, he stretched out his hands as he endured his passion, so as to break the bonds of death and manifest the resurrection. And so with the angels and all the saints, we declare your glory as with one voice we acclaim, Holy, Holy, Holy. Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the font of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts we pray by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. The time he is betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more, giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. 
Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you've held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that, partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis our Pope and Robert our Bishop and all the clergy, religious and women and men who serve in your church. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all. We pray that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. In confidence, we turn together and pray in the words our Savior gave us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. May the peace of the Lord be with you all. Let us share that peace with one another. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. In the name of God, you take away this into the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sin of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy. My word, my soul shall be healed.
Let us pray. May the sacred mysteries of which we have partaken, O Lord, we pray, give us that determination which made St. Charles faithful in ministry and fervent in charity through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you all. Almighty God bless us, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Let us go forth in peace to love and serve the Lord. Have a good evening. <laughs>